I had somebody leave a comment not that long ago asking for me to do a video covering Rust modules. Now, I was a little confused because honestly, I find Rust modules very, I don't know, I, I, I never really needed much of an explanation on them, I guess because I've been coding for a while before I got to Rust, so I kind of already knew how I liked to divide up my source code files. And I had also done a lot of React and Next.js work, so there's a lot of class, or, or there's a lot of kind of division among the files within you know Next and React. So I was kind of confused as to why somebody would need kind of an explanation on this topic. It seems kind of self-explanatory, but maybe it's just that they don't really understand the proper way to do it. And I'm gonna level with you, I don't know if this is the proper way to do it. I'm going to kind of walk you through the way that I handle Rust modules and how to divide up my code. And if it's wrong, I'm sure somebody intelligent will tell me very calmly and very clearly in the YouTube comment section. Sorry, I barely made it through that without laughing. So what are Rust modules? Rust modules are a way to divide up your source code. That's basically it. Um, there are probably a lot of different kind of fancy ways to explain how it works within the compiler sense, but from the individual developer's perspective, really that's about it. You have to declare your modules, your modules have different levels of visibility, and that can kind of play some weird tricks on you, but really that's about it. Now, it's very tempting to try to take this and say, oh, OOP, object-oriented programming. This is how you create class files. Rust does not do object-oriented programming in the traditional sense. You can kind of shoehorn it in by basically creating structs and then creating impl blocks within those structs. Don't do that. OOP is kind of lame. It's fallen out of style. The Twitter people don't like it anymore, so don't, don't do that. That's all of that aside. I don't do it that way. I like to divide my source code up by functionality and create my modules based on code functionality, which is different from creating classes and objects and all of that fun stuff out of it. So let's let's dive into some source code. This is the code for the malware that we've been writing on this channel. Um, and as you can see, I've got the source folder open right here. Um, we have got the main.rs, that's where all of the main code goes. And as you can see, it declares these modules at the top. You've got the C2 module, the func module, the reg module, and then we are going to import things from those, okay? Now this part might be wrong, now that I think about it, let's see if we can do this. Yeah, that didn't work. Um, so basically, all we're doing here is basically saying we want everything from C2, everything from func, and everything from reg, um, and we're going to pull all of those functions in. Now let's look at a couple of those. If we look over at our C2 module, the keen eye or the, the, the folks who probably are already kind of guessing how I'm doing this is I'm dividing all of my C2 code up into my C2 module, all of my func code up into my func module, all of my registry stuff into my reg module and also DS store because of that leaves itself everywhere. Um, so if we open this back up again. Um, now this is only one way to do it. I like to do it this way where you've got separate subfolders and mod.rs within those. I can see plenty of people reasoning that instead of doing that, you would instead do c2.rs, func.rs, and reg.rs. Perfectly fine, There's probably it's probably the best way to do it because it's a little bit clearer within like a file explorer that you know that's what you're working in. But if we pop into c2, um, this is the c2 module, so we've got our xor, encryption function, you'll notice that that is a private function. The functions within modules are private to that module by default, and you have to include public in order to actually use them within other modules. So that's basically how you would export those functions to other modules. Um, so we've got pump a, pub async function send command res, as you can see in, let's see, send cmd res, we call it right here um, within main.rs on line 66. So we're calling it there. So that is a publicly exported function there. And we can even get rid of this because that is imported um, up the top. We use C2 star. Um, so if we go to mod, these functions that have pub at the beginning of them are visible to anything, any other module that imports them. Um, while if you don't include the pub at the beginning, those are only available within that module. So XOR underscore encrypt is only available 
within the C2 module. So XOR underscore encrypt, that works perfectly fine right here. But if we tried to call it within main, we tried to do, let's just do it right here. XOR underscore encrypt ID. And we do a semicolon. We've got not found in scope. And if we tried to explicitly do C2 that, that's not gonna work either. So it is straight up not gonna be able to find it. It is. It actually says it right there, it's a private function. Um, so that is not going to work. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And if we pop back over to C2. Now, again, the way that I divide this up is all of these are functions that have to do with C2 functionality. So command and control, that is sending things to and from the you know external server. Um, so anything in here is going to have something to do with that. And if we look over in, for example, registry and look in its mod, then we've got add startup. So that adds to the startup registry key. And I think, so get username that pulls from the username registry key. Everything in here should have something to do with the Windows registry. We can actually get rid of these, I think. And that should still compile. I'm just kind of cleaning up my code as I go. Now, Funk, I kind of broke a couple of my rules. Funk is kind of a catch-all. It has all of the functionality within the C2 and the registry. And basically what it does is it kind of wraps those. So if we look in Funk, we've got get ID. So that's going to just run a command on the command line to get the ID. Um, drop miner, that is going to pull the miner down from the C2 server and start running it. Um, so these are all just general functions. What I would do if I have more than like two or three like mining related functions, I would create another module with just the mining related functions. Now, this all kind of sounds like adding work. I can kind of see why people might think that. Why not just throw it all in one file? Because after all, after all of this is compiled, it all ends up in one binary anyways, right? So all of these files end up getting combined into one file and that's just the binary that gets dropped. And you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. These are all abstractions that help the developer. So why not just go ahead and do it as easily as humanly possible by throwing it all in one file? Well, if I have a bug in my malware where a registry key is not loading correctly or I'm not able to get the username from the username registry key, I know exactly what file to jump into. So let's jump into the reg file. I know that this is a 125 line file. We've got C2, which is a, an 80 line file. We've got Funk, which is a 216. So that's roughly 240. So that's 300 lines plus main, which is 84 lines, so that's roughly 380 to 400 lines of code. Instead of running through 400 lines of code trying to find the one function that's wrong or the one line of code that's wrong, instead I can just hop into registry where I know all of my registry stuff is and search through literally 25% of that or a little bit over 25% of that. So it just makes it a lot easier to find where the bugs are and it makes it a lot easier to add functionality because I know exactly where that functionality needs to be added. You don't have a mess of 5,000 functions to deal with. That's one of the reasons why object-oriented programming was created to kind of create a standard for how you write software. They went the wrong direction in my opinion, but it is still an organizing principle. You know, I'm kind of thinking the big Lebowski quote that I'm not going to actually put in this video because I might get in trouble. Um, but, you know, all of these ways of organizing code are a good idea. You need to have some kind of organizing principle around writing your code. And modules in Rust are a good way to throw similar functionality into your code and lay it out in an intelligent manner. Again, I might be doing it wrong. Somebody smarter than me might hop into the comments and say that I'm doing it wrong. But here we are. This is the way that I do it, and I'm probably going to continue doing that even if you tell me I'm wrong. That's about it. Take it easy. Peace.